Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome to Immortality. This is an FMV game that was released back in 2022, and it was developed by Sam Barlow. Now, you may recognize that name as the creator of Her Story, which I absolutely loved Her Story. I played it on the channel a few years back, and I can very easily say that Her Story is in my top five favorite FMV games of all time. I had so much fun with that game, and when I heard about Immortality, I knew that I had to get my hands on this. I'm very excited to see what Sambalo has come up with next. Now, normally I'd give a little recap of what I believe this game to be about. However, the game actually provides us... Also, hello there. You're right, my dear. Yet the game actually provides us with an about section. A short history of Marissa Marcel by Sam Barlow. Marissa Marcel is more than just an enigma. Born in France, Marissa moved to London in the late 60s, where she worked as a photographer's model. Her appearance in a soap commercial was spotted by a casting director and led to her being cast from thousands of hopefuls by Arthur Fisher as Matilda in his 1968 Ambrosio. The movie was never released. Marcel followed this up with the 1970 movie Minsky, a collaboration with her DP from Ambrosio, John Durick. The movie was never finished. Marcel was not heard from for over 20 years, until in 1999, she reappeared to film Two of Everything, reuniting with John Durick, now a successful and acclaimed director. With Durick's death, this movie was also shuttered. Marissa Marcel was never heard from again. In 1968, many thought Marcel would become a huge star, but these days she is largely forgotten. A few dedicated enthusiasts have attempted to find her lost movies and floated their own theories of what happened to Marissa Marcel to no avail. Then in 2020, a breakthrough. A large cache of film was discovered containing footage from all three of Marcel's movies. After carefully collating and scanning the footage, we have created this piece of computer software in an attempt to preserve this work and share it so that Marissa may live again in the hearts of her audiences. Very interesting. Very interesting. I do like a good mystery. We also have a content warning. Viewers are warned that the film footage collected here contains subject matter that may be upsetting. The stories are taken from the gothic, thriller, and supernatural genres and tackle themes and elements such as strong curse words, blasphemy regarding the Catholic faith, sudden and surprising visual cuts and sound events, alcohol, cigarette, and drug use, abusive relationships, nudity, sex, blood and wounding, suicide, sexual assault, murder, asphyxia, knife, and firearm. I really appreciate that they've put this in. I, I always like when games will include a, a content warning. I should just say, because I, I do find rape and sexual assaults to be extremely triggering, I did look up some of the scenes containing sexual assault because I, I wanted to know if I could handle it. Personally, they weren't too triggering given the context of the scene, so you know, this, this is the, you know, behind the scenes footage. So you have, you know, the, the director, you know, okay, roll the scene. You know, he's shouting, you know, instructions. You know, someone comes on with the clipboard cut. The actors help each other up. Because of that, the, the context surrounding it, I did not find those scenes particularly triggering. However, if you are extremely sensitive to, to any of these things, then, you know, I, I would suggest putting your own mental health first. It is it, it is never wise to go into a situation where you you know that you will probably, you know, be hurt. So please just, just you know, consider your own mental health and well-being. And if, if this doesn't seem like the game for you, then maybe give it a miss. Okay, now I think that is everything I wanted to say, so let's get started. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, the uh, the controller just shook and, and the titles changed. How how lovely. And um, I was told that the the best the, the best way to play this is with a controller. So I, so I am using that. So if there are a couple of times I stumble, my apologies. I'm really not used to using a controller. Film Grid. Every piece of restored film footage from Marissa Marcel's career is organized here on the grid. Use, I, I think that's right stick to zoom in and out. Okay, yeah, that is right stick. Move across the grid. Use the directional pad or left stick to move the selector. Got it. 
Screen the footage. Once a piece of footage is selected, press A to play it. All right, well, let's, let's start at the beginning. Oh. Screen the footage. Once a piece of footage is selected, press A to play it. Mmm. Playback. This interactive restoration emulates the moviola machines that would have been used to review this footage originally. Tilt the right stick in a direction to scrub the footage. Flick it to spin the reel in that direction. Spin several times to move quickly. Press A to pause the footage. Press it again to resume. I. Now you must be, uh, you must be very excited. I am excited. <laughs> now you look very young in person. People always say that. You look, what, 15, 16? Oh, maybe. Can, uh, can we tell the people at home how old you actually are? <laughs> yes, I'm 20. That is correct. Now, we know you from the movie that you just finished shooting. It, it is finished, right? Yeah, it's finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you don't know, it's a bit of a fairy tale. So Arthur Fisher, the great director, who uh, you probably know from his movies such as Marion and uh, The Man Who Dreamed, was casting for his new movie, Ambrosio. And so instead of casting a recognizable face, he, uh, he wanted to find some fresh talent. So he put the word out and saw, how many was it? Uh, 10,000? Oh, I think it was over 20,000. 20,000. Mm -hmm. He saw 20,000 girls. And long story short, he picked you. Yes. Mm. And this is, I, I'm, I, just so you are aware, I probably will be pausing this a lot. I like to discuss what I'm, what I'm watching, what I'm thinking. Um, it's, it's odd because here's the thing. This is, this is the first time I'm seeing Marissa. So I don't know if this is how she generally behaves. However, she seems very tense. To me, she seems very, like, when when she came on, you know, that seemed genuine, like, oh, yeah, I'm excited. And then he immediately started in on, like, oh, you look so young. Your appearance, you look so young. And she gave a very tight smile, like, oh, yeah, yeah, a lot of people say that. And now he's talking about, like, oh, you, you went up against 10,000 girls. You went up against 20,000 girls. This is an adult. This, she looks young, yeah, but this is an adult. Why are you calling her a girl, sir? You'd never acted before. Uh, not on the screen. I had uh, done modeling and I liked the theater. Yeah. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. I believe we have a short clip here. Do you want to tell us what we're about to see? Yes, so I play Matilda. And, well, I don't want to spoil things too much. <laughs> uh, she's a young woman who sneaks into a monastery disguising herself as a monk. And then there is a lot of drama and magic and intrigue. Okay. Marissa Marcel as Matilda, a woman disguised as a young monk. Here we go. Oh, my God. The same magic that powers this lens can also grant you what you wish. How so? You remember the night that I was to die, when we took to St. Clair's sepulchre? That night, I performed a rite. I summoned a fallen angel to aid me. What a feat. Wow. Quite a role for your first movie. <laughs> well, Mr. Fisher was quite the teacher. Now I heard he can be quite demanding. Well, you know, he has a, an idea of the picture in his head, and um, nothing is going to come between him and that, not even the actors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that was a very polite way of saying I hated him. I did not like this man at all, but I'm in public, so I'm going to be polite about it. And uh, this is <clears throat> Mr. Fisher's first film with nudity, correct? Yes, well, you know, he felt that a modern motion picture should reflect the times. And you uh, film this in Europe. Correct. They go for that in Europe, the nudity. Our, our producer said, uh, we are born naked, and if we are lucky, we die naked. So why not shoot the movie naked? <laughs> well put. He kept his clothes on. <laughs> she, she's very witty. And, uh, and the picture is out soon? I hope so. Yeah. And oh. Now, That's interesting, because we know it never came out. We know that for whatever reason, Ambrosio never came out. Why not just say yes? Because to say, oh, I, I hope so, in a very kind of playful sing-song voice, that would imply that she knew that something dodgy was up. She knew that something was going to go wrong if you're saying, I hope so, rather than, oh, yeah, it's going to come out soon. Ooh. Hmm. You're not in New York only to talk about Ambrosio, but uh, you're filming another picture. That's right, yes, with uh, John Jurek, who was the director of photography on Ambrosio. We're writing it together. 
That is amazing. You are smarter than you look. <laughs> I'm kidding. So what is, what is this movie about? So uh, it's called Minsky, and uh, it's about uh, an artist who is killed, and the suspect, the number one suspect, is his muse. That's the part I play. And there is a detective investigating, and he falls for her. Well, I can't blame him. <laughs> well, he, he has a cop mindset, and it's really about the clash between the artist... Okay, I, I have to speak about that. That was some very good deflection there. That was some very good deflection. She is properly lit up. Now that she is talking about Minsky, you, you could even see she actually pointed out, I presume that, um, I presume that uh, John Durick is somewhere on the set behind the cameras, you know, maybe sat in the audience because she, she actually pointed like, oh yeah, with, with John Durick, she properly lit up and she seems so engaged, so focused now that she's talking about this, this passion project of hers. And he tries to go like, oh, he, he tries to bring it back to her appearance and this, that and the other. And she immediately deflects, like, no, I'm not having that. I want to talk about this thing that I'm passionate about. I'm more than my appearance. That, that, that was some nice deflection there. How they live and, and this cop mindset, the conservative mindset, I guess, he is um, surprised by how messy the lives of artists are. Oh, that's true. That's true. We've had some on the show. Mm -hmm. Mr. Warhol. Have you met Mr. Warhol? Oh, yes, yes, we've met. Yes, yes. we had him on the <laughs> show and he hardly spoke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> such a towering figure and yet such a small quiet man in person you know but his superstars though that's what he calls them superstars they are quite uh playful yes we'd we'd like to put some of them in our movie well just make sure you've got a chaperone <laughs> <laughs> and uh you like new york oh yes i love it the people are so interesting all right well we've got to take a short break here do you mind reading this out yes. uh, for us now marvelous magic will turn the next 60 seconds into a commercial Magic indeed. That was so interesting, especially at the end there. Especially at the end when they were talking about Warhol. And, you know, he seemed to be engaging in an actually intellectual discussion with her. You know, the way she moved, it, it almost seemed like she was moving back in surprise. Like, a, oh, you actually want to have a, a discussion? Like, oh, yeah, like, this is great. And then he brings it back on to like, oh, his superstars are quite playful. You'll need a chaperone. And again, her face got so tense. Her face got so tense of like, oh, yeah, no, I don't, I don't want to be doing this. I'm more than just my appearance. I've got a brain in here. Let's see if we can go back. Okay. Ooh, image navigation. To navigate and organize the footage, we provide a novel concordance feature. Pause the footage, then press Y to enter image mode. Use left stick to move the eye cursor over a key image such as an actor's face or an important prop. Press A and the concordance will match cut to another shot in which it appears. New footage will be added to the film grid. I hold up, hold up. Now, considering we're trying to find out what happened to Marissa, and my, my gut instinct is that she had enough of dealing with people like this guy and she just decided, yeah, nah, I'm, I'm good. I don't need this in my life. And she just retired. They, they said she was born in France. Maybe she retired to the south of France and she's got a nice little cottage out there. I don't know. But, but either way, we're trying to piece together what happened to Marissa. Now, there are a few ways that I could see us going about this. We could do it completely at random, just, um, how, yeah, why? So we could just, you know, do do random things, you know, like, oh, we, we've got a plan. We've got Marissa herself. This is extremely sensitive. You got, we got some paper. We got, what was that, a mug? Yeah, we could do this completely at random. We could try focusing on specific items or actors, or we could do this movie by movie. And that's the way I'm rather tempted to do this. I'm, I'm tempted to try and go in as, as close to chronological order as I can. I, I think we should focus on one specific movie at a time. Now then, now then, now then, where? So I can see um, at the bottom of the screen, you know, we've got image mode, frame back and forward, start and end. I would assume that that is, you know, go to the start of the clip, go to the end of the clip. I don't know what those buttons are on a controller. I have no idea what those buttons are because like I said this this is only the third game I'm playing with a controller. I'm I'm still pretty new. I don't know what those buttons are. However, I believe on a keyboard 
Yeah, there we go. I think it's I and O to get to the beginning of a clip. No, then let's... There was a scene from Ambrosio, so I, I kind of want to focus on that. Yeah, it should be... Okay, there we go. Yeah, uh, let's As a young play. Monk. Here we go. Okay, let's let's focus on your co-star. Uh, why? Why do I think we're jumping into the sex and nudity almost immediately? Clear the set. Sarah, if you please. Seventeen Bravo, take two. And action. Sacrificed the world a lifetime of pleasures. What have you lost which I have not? The pleasure was shared. Your vow of celibacy is unnatural. Your love a crime. God would not have made it taste so sweet. No regrets, Ambrosio. Enjoy what we have before I am gone. I will leave this world vibrating with pleasure. My vows are already broken. <laughs> and cut! Nice one. So I, I do believe that Ambrosio is based off a, um, it's based off a based off a book called The Monk, which I've, I've never read it, however, I am somewhat familiar with it. And if, if Marissa is playing Matilda, that is one of the more complex characters in the book. Extremely complex. And the, it, it really just highlights how disrespectfully that interview was talking to her. You know, this this lady is playing one of the most complex characters in the film, and you're going on about how young she looks, and how she battled against 20,000 other girls. I'm like, sir, sir. Image Grid. The Image Grid allows you to revisit and sort the images you have collected from Marissa Marcel's movies. Uh, press left trigger to switch between the film grid and the image grid. You are now equipped to explore and enjoy the restoration project. Okay, thank you kindly. So yeah, so this this guy is Robert Jones. Alright, now let's let's go with that. I like that. So yeah, this was in um this was on the 12th of the 9th. And then this was Yeah, this this was the next year. This was um the next April. Alright, well let's Let's go back to this and let's, okay, let's, you know what? Let's just stick with this guy. Let's just stick with this guy. Oh, hello. <laughs> You're right there. Okay. 61, Charlie. Take three. Smoke! For what am I summoned here? I am condemned to die. Save me. Are you prepared to renounce him who made you and who died for you? Answer yes and Lucifer is yours. You asked too much. 
Take me from this dungeon. Be my servant for a single hour, and I will be yours for a thousand years. No. I must have your soul. Have it mine and mine forever. I'll not doom myself to an eternity. I, I will not give up hope of one day being pardoned. You are infamous to both men and angels. Your destiny is already mine. Liar! Sign this parchment and I will bear you from hence. No. Pray for luck when they burn you. Pray that the heat causes the skin around your neck to contract and strangle you quick. Granted, the pain is most intense in the beginning, before your nerves have been seared. But these holy inquisitors are skilled at making this last. Sign. The guards are on their way here. You have minutes left. I'm sorry, now take me away. Hold. Do you freely and absolutely renounce your creator and his son? I do, I do. Do you make over your soul to me forever? Forever. Without future appeal to divine mercy? I am yours forever and irrevocably. I abandon all claim to salvation. Now save me, bear me away. You are mine, past reprieve. And I fulfill my promise. Now! Means we're late again. Well, let's go again. No, oh, the the guy responsible for the wings is just there, like, oh, I think I fucked up. I think I fucked up. I oh, so yeah, this this absolutely is um based off of the monk, one hundred percent. I I was saying that the character of Matilda is complex. The character of Ambrosio is complex, and one I would argue would be extremely difficult to play. Ambrosio commits some of the worst acts that a man can possibly commit, that anyone can possibly commit. And all the while he blames everyone but himself. Ambrosio never takes responsibility for his own actions. It's always, oh, Matilda, you you guided me into darkness. Um, God, what's, what's the other girl's name? I, there's there's another there's another lady in this, and at, at one point he blames her. He blames the devil. He blames this, that, and the other. Ambrosio never he never takes any responsibility for his actions, and I think that that could be quite a, a challenging thing for an actor. You know, you're you're having to do or you know to pretend to do all of these acts and be so so superior, so righteous as you do them. That that would probably be rather a rather difficult part to play. You know what? Let's let's go back. Show me show me more of you. Oh hello, what is one second what? Okay, this this is still Ambrosio. You know what? You know what? Because there's there's no way of marking what clips you have and haven't watched. Because if if I cut to um one of the later films, I'm not going to watch it. I'm going to save it until I'm doing those films. So you know what? Anything I've watched... Mm -mm. Where? I'm trying to, um... Would that be... Why? Why can't I, um... I can I can see right there there's the option to favorite. You can heart something. Ah, it's X. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to favor all of the things I've seen just so that I'm aware of like okay, this I haven't seen. This I haven't seen. To the beginning. Looks like some sort of crew party. Oh, hello. Everyone's dancing except Marissa. What's going on, Lucy? Well then, this has been my first time working here in Italy. And my first time working with 
the great Arthur Fisher. I just want to say thank you for trusting me to be your Ambrosia. What a movie. I always say, you can't make an A picture without an A team, and this has been an A team. Look, we took an 18th century novel and made a 20th century picture out of it. That's pretty magical. M.G. Lewis, I don't know if you're up there or down there. <laughs> Wherever you are, I hope you like what we made. VMO. <laughs> Arthur, you want to say something? Come on. Well, as you know, I work behind the camera, and I usually have someone to write all my dialogue, so I'll keep this short. You all have been wonderful, and I'm sure you're probably sick of hearing me talking, so I'll shut up. Thank you, Gino. Thank you, Robert. And Marissa, get up here. <laughs> and all of you, you've been a marvelous crew. <laughs> my first movie. <laughs> what a first movie. I feel like I just went through four years of film school and acting school and just life in a few months. What a team. Arthur, you were harsh but fair. For everything you put me through, I learned a lot. And your karma is having to spend the next six months staring at footage of me while I sleep it off. <laughs> I hope you see something you like in there. Everyone, a big round of applause to our star. Our gorgeous, la bellissima Marissa Marcel. <laughs> I love you all, and I'm here only to say that I pay for the bar for the next hour. It is rare that I'm this generous. So please, have a drink and toast to our new friends, to movies. To, to movies! <laughs> Cheers. Mm, so, I all... <laughs> I, I have thoughts, I have thoughts about, um, I, I believe they said his name was Arthur Fisher, the director of the film. I'm not sure if this was intentional or not. And if, if this just happened to be the, the actor that they picked, then, you know, disregard everything I'm saying. However, if this was intentional casting, the, the guy they picked to play Arthur Fisher looks remarkably similar to Alfred Hitchcock. And Alfred Hitchcock was, he was a, a genius when it came to movies. However, in terms of who he was as a person, he was a nasty bastard. He was, he was thoroughly unpleasant. He, what was his, um, he has a quote. I can't remember what it is exactly, but it's the idea that you should treat actors like cattle because that's all they are. You shouldn't treat them as people. You should treat them as mindless animals. He, he genuinely believed that actors have no talent. Act like you can take, you can take, I don't know. Um, oh God, you, you can take. But it, it's been that long since I watched any recent films. I'm like, who's who's an up and coming actor? Who's someone decent? Let's let's go with Johnny Depp. You could take Johnny Depp, and you could take Bill, who works on a construction site and has never stepped foot never stepped foot in a theater. They are both as good as acting as one and the other. Bill is just as good as Johnny Depp. It's just the fact that Johnny Depp has amazing directors that bring those talents out of him. If Bill was placed before the same directors, then Bill would be just as good as Johnny Depp. And Hitchcock genuinely believed that. He believed that actors had zero talent. And he was, a, especially if you, were, um, if you were a woman, he was thoroughly unpleasant to work for if you were a woman. And if... If that is intentional, if they are, you know, trying to draw parallels between Fisher and Hitchcock, I feel so bad for Marissa. I feel so badly for her if that is intentional. If it's not, if they just like the actor and it's just, you know, happenstance, then like I said, ignore what I've just said. But if that is something they are trying to do, then I can already tell what kind of director this man is. And it's, it's not going to be good. It's not gonna, you know what, I wanna focus on him. 
Show me, show me him. Show me him. So, let's make sure we're going from the beginning. All right, settle down. Now we come to the sequence I call the fuck montage. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> or the lovemaking montage, ladies. Sophie excluded. Uh, uh, why, why is she excluded? Why is she excluded? I, mm, yep, yeah, I, 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 a big, big warning sign is over this man's head. I'm just like, oh, sir, sir, I'm not going to like you, am I? It is our obligation here to proceed mathematically and explore all the configurations of coupling. I will sculpt you into the embodiment of the audience's fantasies. And Ambrosio will provide counterpoint with his sermon, which will add depth to our spectacle. Interior, Cathedral of the Capuchins. Ambrosio in the pulpit speaks to a large crowd. The poets speak of the pleasures of the flesh. In the same breath, they talk of their souls. The sensations they speak of, they misattribute. The elevating of souls they feel is inverted. The rush they feel is the rush of their descent as they plunge into Satan's realm. Interior, Abbey, Ambrosio said, Ambrosio kisses Matilda's breast as they roll around on his bed. Voice over, your body is a gift from God, it is loaned you and must be returned when it is time to enter heaven. But little does God think of those that have sold off his gift, those that have misused it. Do not doubt the pleasures of the flesh. They are Satan's currency. Your body is only worth so much. It is possible to bankrupt yourself, to make what God gave you worthless. Interior, Cathedral of the Capuchins. Matilda watches from the side, her face mostly concealed by her habit. She smiles. Satan's trick is that these pleasures, which may at first seem equal to that offered by God in heaven over time, reveal their emptiness, regret, and guilt. But the only pleasures left for the harlot and the whore. That magic the poet speaks so highly of is soon just the rutting of animals in the street. Interior, Abby, Ambrosio said, Matilda is sat in Ambrosio's lap as they make love. He looks over her shoulder so there is no eye contact. Ambrosio's face is soaked in sweat, a mix of ecstasy and pain. Voice over like a gambler who plays again and again and again to win back his losses. The sinner soon finds themselves debauching themselves further to feel as they once did. Their sins compound, their debts worsen, like a wasp flying into a honey trap. The sinner will find themselves unable to escape. There's only one protection from this trap. It is holiness. It's purity. Interior, Cathedral of the Capuchins. Antonia smiles to hear Ambrosia's fire. She knows she is holy and pure. And what pleasures there are in purity. A sinner may look back and remember what it felt like to be clean in that lightness of soul. To feel God's eye fall upon us and to meet that gaze with our own eyes open and pride in our hearts. This is the true pleasure of the flesh. He glances at Antonia in the audience, steps down. Interior, Abby, Ambrosio's cell. Ambrosio is thrusting into Matilda from behind, his hand on her neck. He pushes her face into the bed as he thrusts. His movements are violent, desperate. His eyes are empty. He climaxes. Oh, Rose of Matilda. Eyes still empty. Matilda turns her head up from the bed. Sad as they know. Prila, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. My last confession was two weeks past. <clears throat> Interior, Cathedral of the Capuchins. Ambrosio sits in the confession booth, listens to a rich lady. I was jealous towards a friend. In what way? Her husband bought her a necklace of considerable beauty and value. She waits. Is that all? She feels the pressure to entertain Ambrosio. I have had impure thoughts. Please detail them. <laughs> there is a servant in my employ who is very handsome. I have daydreamed of kissing him and of treating him as my husband. Can you imagine fornicating with your servant? Yes. 
Once it came into my head by accident, but I have twice since put my mind to recalling it. This is all I can remember. I'm sorry for these and all my sins. These are grave sins. As your confessor, I must ignore my disgust and help you return from the abyss. I did not act on these. You have let Satan into your heart. You are infected with his poison. The remedy for this will be severe. Yes, Father. Every morning on waking, two Hail Marys. Limit your diet to water and bread. In the afternoon, pray the rosary before bed. Another Hail Mary. Do you show contrition? My God. I am heartily sorry for having offended you, and I detest all my sins, because I dread the loss of heaven and the pains of hell, but most of all because I have offended you, my God, who are all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve with the help of your grace to confess my sins, to do penance, and to amend my life. Amen. Ambrosio is distracted by his thoughts. Interior, Abbey, Ambrosio says, Matilda is going down on Ambrosio. He doesn't look at her. Would you care to explain what that means, my dear? I, for the benefit of Marissa here. She's sucking. I know what oral sex is. <laughs> <laughs> Voice over. Go. I, I have to stop to talk about this. One, she is sat so still. M Marissa, I mean. She is sat so still whilst all of this is going on. And the, um, the, the lady with the, um, sort of pale greenish blue cardigan, the, the one that sat on the other side of, um, of Arthur Fisher. I, I, I just, his, what, what he said there was extremely inappropriate. You know, the, oh, would you care to explain my dear? And then she kind of jumps in like, oh, she's sucking his... You know, Marissa jumps in. Oh, I know what oral sex is. The the fact that they are treating her so... Almost like she's a child. Almost like she's a child. Oh, she doesn't know what any of this is. She's a... She's an adult. She was... She was 20 when she was doing the... The interview. So that... That would make her, you know, at a minimum, like... 19, 18, depending on how long this film has been in production... So she's, she's an adult. She has presumably had, or, you know, probably at the very least, you know, she, she's very pretty. So you would imagine that, you know, people would be attempting to date her. Or at the very least, she, she would probably know these things. Yet they are, they're treating her almost like a very innocent child. And then going into like, you know, like, oh, you, you need to explain what going down on, you know, means. We need to explain that to you. I'm like, it's, <laughs> it's pretty obvious. You're going down. What is down? Uh, um, I what I can't tell because the 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 other lady, the the lady narrating most of this, she she seems to be enjoying this, and I I can't tell if because here's the thing, Fisher he he's being very inappropriate. So is she being inappropriate to try and appease him? to try and get into his good graces? Is this just naturally her, her personality? I'm not entirely sure, but what what is very interesting there, so those, those two are laughing. I mean, these two are laughing about all of this. And him, Robert, I think his name was, he turns to Marissa and he's like, oh, it's okay, we can sort everything out. They're, they're just laughing at like, oh, she's so innocent and we made her uncomfortable. Ha ha ha. Meanwhile, this guy actually seems to care about her, her safety. You know, her, you know, th this, because it's weird. They're being really fucking weird. They're being extremely weird. It's really uncomfortable. And this is the only guy who seems to be like, oh, they're making her uncomfortable. I should try and appease that. I should try and make her feel slightly better about all this don't worry we'll sort all this out we'll we'll get it all you know shut it away and you know you'll know what's happening like one good on him good on him for not being an arsehole but i i i want to know more about this lady excuse me yeah i i want to know more about this lady i want to see if this is just how she is or maybe if she's hamming it up to try and appease this guy um one second. I I wanna I wanna finish this. God, the Father of Mercies, 
for the death and resurrection of his son has reconciled the world to himself and sent the Holy Spirit amongst us for the forgiveness of sins. For the ministry of the church, may God give you pardon and peace and I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. He climaxes on AMS. Let's hear it. Oh. Bigger. <sighs> well, <laughs> I need a cigarette. Back in ten. Okay, well, uh, no, 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 that wasn't what I wanted. I want to go to this. At least, at least this lady is picking on everyone. She, she seems to be picking on both of them. At least she's not just picking on one person. That seems rather unfair. I, I think perhaps this is just her personality. She seems quite, she, I, I think potentially this is just the type of person who likes to make others feel a little bit uncomfortable, maybe. I still, I notice, I notice that this guy wasn't behaving inappropriately towards him. It's mainly the women. It's mainly, you know, like, treating Marissa as extremely innocent and treating this lady like, you know, a debased whore. You know, it's, it's the fuck montage for you, madam. For you, it's the lovemaking montage. And the other women, of course, but not for you. It's the fuck montage for you. So, mm, mm -hmm, interesting. Very interesting, and let me just favorite that before I forget. Now, I am just about out of time for this episode. In the next one, I think we're gonna track down that lady. The, the one who seems to like making people uncomfortable. I think we're gonna see if we can track down any more clips of her. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below, and if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.